Hello, everybody. I think everything is going okay. It looks like the audio is correct. I'm going to wait and make sure before I get going too much to hear back from you guys that everything is okay. Hopefully. I don't know. Someone says, oh, no, that concerns me. Um, audio check. Okay, good. I think we've got everything sorted today. Hopefully because the ads that I made, because I'm hilarious, have audio this time. And I'm hoping not to blow anyone's eardrums out. Fingers crossed. The boys are in it though, so you know if if you do blow your drums out, at least there were hounds involved. So um, I think we are good. I'm still getting used to having to move the microphone with me, so you may have to remind me if I forget. So this is the new format we're going with. If you've watched my previous live streams, this is more like well what we did last week. So we're just going to focus for the first hour or so on this project alone, just the chickadee. If you have questions relating to charcoal or this drawing, make sure to go ahead and ask those in the sec the comment section or in the chat, and one of the moderators will get that over to me. In order to focus on the actual lesson and get it done, turns out, I have to ignore you guys for a bit. And then after we get the chickadee done, so that lesson is complete, I've got some topics to talk about or any questions you have, we can talk about those. We'll be talking about, is it okay to rinse your acrylic brushes, the, that water down the drain? Yes and no. I've got some info we want to talk about there. So we've got a few things to discuss. And yeah, I think we are good. And oh, yes, thank you, Nick. I have a live auction going. So if you would like to own this, you can head over to my website, lockfree.com. I've got a link directly, if I did my job right, in the description for the, I actually should turn the audio on, huh? Um, so I can hear when when, when somebody contacts me. But um, you can head over to bid on this at my website. Starting bid, $25, no reserve, but it is gonna be a little bit different than last week. I did not factor in how much it cost me to ship something once I mat it at 11 by 14. It has to go in a box. I can't do it flat like a normal like I was planning. So if you want it matted, if you are going to bid and you would like me to mat this, just contact me after you win and let me know. It'd be $15 because it costs a lot more to ship and my materials and the box and all of that. So it is something available to you. Otherwise you can mat it on your own. It's a standard 11 by 14 inch mat. So you can just go get, pick one up for a couple dollars at like Hobby Lobby or Michael's or wherever. Um, what the mat looks like, actually it wouldn't even show on this, oh, kind of it will, but the mat will block it down into about that, about that size if you were to go for that option. But otherwise, it's just coming to you as the paper itself. <coughs> Okay, starting off, to get started on this project, I do a couple of things. With this paper, this is the Canson V10s. It is extremely opaque. Like I can't trace, if you like to draw your, your work out on another piece of paper, now that doesn't mean somebody who doesn't want to freehand. You can freehand it and still have the same problem. I don't like to freehand on my actual like finished projects paper because if you have to erase, which you're going to, you can mess up that paper and you end up with smudge marks all over. I just don't like it. So I like to, if I'm gonna freehand, I freehand hand it onto another piece of paper and then trace or use a projector to project that onto the canvas. Or if you just want to trace, that's okay too. That whatever gets you good finished art is all I care about. I don't care what methods you use. I'm just going to give you a few easy tips to make that happen for you. This paper, the Canson Me Tens, this is a light gray. It is really opaque. I cannot use that to trace from. So I have to use a projector to get my image on. Um, you could also use tracing and transfer paper, but the transfer paper or the, the tran yeah, the transfer paper, that is the word I'm looking for, doesn't always erase that well. It doesn't smudge out as well. So just something to be aware of. It is an option for you though. But that's how I get my image on there um, with this paper, either tracing and transfer paper, or in my case, ideally, a projector. If it's a thinner paper, a solid white paper, you can just tape this to your computer monitor and trace over it. Some of you tech people are cringing, but I'm telling you, I've done it for years, never caused a problem. So there you go. Um, the next thing is I'm using a black tape. This is, do I have any over here? I don't. Yes, I do. So a black masking tape, this is acid-free or pH neutral. You don't want to use regular masking tape. Regular masking tape is going to leave, it all, all of the tape is going to leave residue behind. But if it's not an acid-free residue it's leaving behind, over the years that can start to yellow and cause issues as far as the work being archival. So when you're working on something like this, ideally, use that acid-free tape. The links for everything that I'm using in today's video are listed in the video description. The reference photo that I'm using, you can get over at my website, lawcree.com, the link for that the direct link for that is also in the video description so you can pick that up there and draw along with me so i think that map kind of covers everything there okay better clarity on the video is it blurry for anyone else or um 
hold on, let me double check really quick that it looks okay for me. This will take me a quick second to find. It may just be your on your end, but I wanna make sure that it's not something else going on. I mean, not that I know how to fix it. Um, let's see. Going to the YouTube studio. I don't have an easy way to get my link. You think this would be easier for me to do? Um, content live. I had this open earlier. I should have just left it that way so I could do this and easily check. Okay, let's see. Nope. Oh, mute it. Don't need to listen. No, the um, clarity, as far as I can tell, is fine. You would just need to change your settings to it's auto doing it at 480, switch it to 1080. So you just need to change your own settings. Um, yeah, see, Sheba said it blurry on her phone, but clear on the iPad. It's just your settings of whatever um, you've got going. So it should be fine. So, okay. Going to go ahead and close that down. And close that. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started on this. One of the things, the big things I wanted to talk to you a little bit different from last week about was the uh, charcoal powder. So I went ahead and picked some up. Have not, I've been out of this. That's actually probably blurry. Let's see. You can kind of see. It's kind of blurry because it's too close to the camera. But this is just a little thing of charcoal powder. And you can get this on Amazon. I have the link in the video description if you do want to. Now, here's the thing with charcoal powder. It is messy. It is, it's actual powder. Well, it's really dark. You can't tell. But that is powder, like super, super. What are you doing? I'm like having issues here. Um, it's messy. Like you can make an absolute mess with this. Now, a lot of people will use a brush, something like this, to apply char charcoal powder, graphite powder. I've used it. I've tried it. It is messy with unsatisfactory results. We'll, we'll go with that. It's actually, look, it's all over my hand just from touching this brush because I used it to sample, um, to test it yesterday. Um, wipe that off so I don't get fingerprints all over. So what I recommend doing instead of a brush like that, if you do that, use those brushes, you're going to have fall off of that, that charcoal is going to go everywhere. So instead, soft tools. That is these guys here. You can pick these up on Amazon there or the, some art supply stores have them. The link is in the video description, but I'm just going to use this to apply the charcoal powder. And the cool thing with this is that it's going to give me a really, really soft result and it erases so well for highlights. So you can get some pretty cool effects. Charcoal erases pretty well anyway, but there we go. So what I'm going to do is just dip this a little bit. Look how quickly that just blackens right up. Tap some of that off because it's going to be everywhere. And then I will also tap it on. I'm using the lid, just kind of tapping some in there. Like it really does make a mess. And now we can just go over wherever we want it to be. Now I can pretty safely go over the bird too because I can see his lines, but I'm not even going to worry about smudging that out. But I can get a really nice soft look. I'm going to reload that again. Just a little bit. Tap that off. and then lightly go over it. And just, I would rather see you layer this until you get it the darkness you want than try to get it as dark as you want first time through because it's just so easy to make a mess. And I just want kind of a sketchy, soft background in there. Let's add a bit more. See here, I didn't tap as much off and you can see it's, it's much darker. We'll go through and blend that again. You can see I'm really not losing my lines. So you, you can blend right over it. And you don't have, you can just skip this step if you don't have the charcoal powder. Technically, you can make your own by grinding up if you've got the charcoal sticks. Be going back over that some more. Now what I'm doing here, can you see this harsh line? That's because I switched directions while it was still touching. So I've got a few ways that I can blend that out. One, just take a piece of paper or towel and rub over that. That is soft enough, I can, I can lose that. If you want to avoid it in the first place, don't stop and switch directions while it's still touching. As you're pushing down, lift up and that will give you a really soft end look 
if that makes sense. Like you don't end up with that harsh line like I have there. But because it's charcoal, it is pretty easy to correct if that does happen. You can soften all of that back out as needed. I softened it too much. I need to add some more. Could you use pan pastels instead of the charcoal powder? Um, Baby Pandas asks. Yes, you could. It would give you a different result. I'm not sure why you, though. I mean, it would actually be a unique result, but I'm not sure what the benefit, like, pan pastels, unless you were doing black and white, the, the charcoal itself works just fine. And it's way less expensive. But if you wanted to add a touch of color, those are compatible mediums to work with or to mix. So some cool looks you could do with this if you wanted to take an eraser. I'm not going to do that on tonight's, but you could take an eraser and put in or erase little circles so you've got that bokeh look. Really easy way to get that. And this just gives you a somewhat softer result than what you typically are going to get with the pencils themselves. The other thing, notice I'm not, and this is something that I really, really had to break the habit of doing. I used to take my fingers and blend everything with my fingers. That isn't archival. We want to keep our, our fingers off the work as much as possible. I mean, sometimes things are just going to blend better with our fingers. Do that limited. Don't do it. Don't do it often if you can avoid it. We want to keep the oils off our skin so that the work stays archival. People, finger juice is not, it's not acid free. So we're going to go back to this. We just have this nice soft shadow back here and this is just going to be such a great way put the lid back on this by the way because trust me you do not want to spill this the mess this would make like it would take for you will it's worse than glitter almost like you would never have it all the way cleaned up so be very careful not to spill that keep the lid on and I'm always checking my fingers as I work in charcoal because if you don't you may if you do touch something you get fingerprints we don't want that. So, and while sometimes you can erase it, a lot of times you cannot. So it depends on how severe it was or if there were oils on your skin at the time that came off onto the work. Okay, back to work. So now we can go ahead and start on the chickadee himself. Whenever you're working from a photo, this one I got from Unsplash, and this is linked over at my website. Link is in the description if you want to download this to follow along. It, whenever, <coughs> excuse me, Whenever you're working with a, photo, a color photograph, switch it to black and white so it's easier for, easier for you to judge your values. And usually when I switch something to black and white, I'll do some adjustments in Lightroom or any whatever photo editor you have, but maybe make hype up the contrast, see if it looks better if you make a few adjustments there. But it's much, much easier to judge your values if you change the reference photo to black and white. Okay. Where are my pencils? Now, somebody asked before the live stream started about how I store my pencils. This is what I do when I'm working. I'll usually have only a couple out. Well, if I'm working in colored pencil, I may have 20 or 50 out on the palette. But the way that I store them when they're not in their usual storage box is just in these mason jars. So just pretty handy. Makes it easy to keep everything from rolling off the paper or your table, whatever you're working on. So I'm going to grab one white. And I'm going to do the same thing that I often do. I would like a softer, extra soft and a medium. So there's my extra soft. Do I have a medium in here? It may take me a minute. Apparently, there we go. I didn't order many of them. Now, when it comes to charcoal, the medium and the extra soft, as far as how dark they are, they're similar. Extra soft is going to go a little bit blacker, but not by a lot. The main reason I'm gonna use extra soft or soft, those two are really similar, but an, a softer pencil versus medium or hard is that the medium and hard leads, they are going to keep a finer point. They're gonna be a hard, well, it's a harder lead. So it's not going to be as brittle or as smudgy. So if I want an area to just stay put and not smudge all over the place, then I'm gonna go with a medium pencil. If I want something that I know I want to smudge out really well, then I'm going to switch over to my soft or extra soft. And usually just keep it easy. Just go with um, just two, whatever your soft one, whatever your medium one. So you could go with a hard and a soft, or you could go like here, medium, extra soft, any of that. Okay. Now the white pencil, somebody said they had a hard time finding white pencils. Generals, charcoal, white, this should be listed in the video description. I use this for drawing my outlines on my acrylic paintings. I use it for everything. This is, I, I have a lot of them. I just buy mass amounts because I use them for everything. They last a pretty long time. 
But okay, let's see, where do we wanna start? Actually, next we need glassine. Let me find where I put that. I'm going to start on the branch because I am right-handed. I would rather work from this direction over so that I'm not resting my hand as much on what I'm working on. So let's just start with the branch. I'm gonna put a piece of glassine here. And the reason that the glassine is important, I'm just taping that to my board. The reason that that is important is it's gonna keep me from smudging work, keeps the side of my hand clean. You guys know what that's like when you've been drawing in a sketch pad. And no oils for my skin are getting on the artwork. I can rest my hand there. So just looking at where the general lights and darks are. And at first I just wanna map it out. I don't worry about detail or anything like that being super exact. And I'm gonna use my soft or actually extra soft for the base here. I'm just gonna put that mostly in the middle and I'll smudge that out to the outer edges. Now one thing, and I forgot to list it, I don't know if I put it in the video description, let me find it. I lost it, but I need it. So hold on one second here. Have a view of the boys while I find this. I'm gonna have to give it up. I don't think it's in here. It must be in the office and I'm not gonna walk all the way over there right now because I am quite lazy and you guys are sitting here waiting. So I have a tool that you can, it's like this little rocket ship and you can squeeze it and it blows air. So when you wanna blow the charcoal away, that way you don't risk the chance of you spitting when you blow on it. I had a student who wore braces and she had been eating in and out. I used to teach in California, so we had a lot of in and out there and she had been eating and yeah, she spit on that. It didn't come off. So just something to be aware of. It's a really cool little tool, but I don't have that. Um, and it, some of you are saying you use canned air. Canned air works, but I don't have to refill this. You just squeeze it, done. It's amazing. And I left it in the office. Okay, so back to work. So again, with that extra soft, we've got a little knot in the wood here. I'm gonna pull this over as I work down. And I don't know if you can see, some of the charcoal is falling off. That's normal. Don't worry too. I mean, it's not going to make that big of a mess. Not like the charcoal powder. But I would still, like when I'm done painting all of this, I am going to wipe down my easel with a damp rag just to, to pick up anything left over, any of that charcoal powder left over because it, I have left it where I forgot to do that, forgot to wipe it up. I've done this with pan pastels and colored pencil on sanded paper too. And when I... I use the hairdryer on the acrylic painting or oil paint. No, it wouldn't have been an oil painting, um, acrylic or a watercolor. It blew the dust up into the work. So do wipe it down after, but it's not that, that messy. It's not as bad as what I find like pastels to be. Okay, let's see. We've got, um, yes, Nick, I am in the Discord chat. Let me see. Looks like I missed that. It didn't notify me when we had a message come in. Okay, nope, that's it. The discard gourd for those of you who are like, why are you talking about that right now? It's what I'm using. So um, Joseph and Nick, who are our moderators, check out. Nick has not been making videos, but Joseph has been make, live streaming regularly. Link is in the video description. Also an artist. But they are sending me your questions through Discord if there's anything that I need to answer. But for whatever reason, it's not notifying me. I mean, kind of it is. My phone is not notifying me, the app is. Okay, focus, Lisa. We'll come back and fuss over those feet later. Okay, I don't even have my shading tool. I am not as ready as I thought I was. So what I will typically do is keep one side for the dirty, actually it looks like that's the dirty side and one side for the lighter side. If your, your shading tool starts getting really dirty, I mean mine's pretty dirty on both, just take a piece of like an old rag or in this case I'm using Viva paper towel which is very cloth-like so it works well and I'm going to wipe that off. 
I don't care if the dirty side is dirty. And now I am going to smudge that out. Now I can also use the soft tools for smudging. It doesn't have to be, actually smudges really nicely, but this is another method for blending it. You don't have to just use the shading tools. The shading tools are going to typically make things a lot lighter because you're pushing a little bit harder. This is a much softer look. So, or you're not, or a softer pressure. And so it stays way darker. It's just a little bit harder to control, but for this, it works. Okay. Now let's get some of those highlights on. Now these, if you are over on Patreon and you watched my recent video, I was talking about this with the warbler. When you've got branches, it's really easy to think that your highlight is going to go all the way down. If light's coming from this side, your shadow's all the way down this side. That's not really how things work in nature. You're going to have where one branch causes a shadow on another one. And so instead of just thinking, okay, my light is all on one side, so this is all the shadow side, you're going to have light or shadows that come and go. They kind of skip depending on what around it that you may not be seen is casting shadow or highlights on or reflections on. So this is something that you really want to watch in your work. Look at your reference photos where it's so easy to assume, okay, shadow on this side all the way down. You just, you made a cartoon, now it's flat. If you want it to look more three-dimensional, you want it to look like that branch is weaving in and out and aiming towards you and moving away, watch that the shadow will be partial. So partial shadow, a little bit of highlight, partial shadow. It's not just all the way down one side. Okay. And it looks like we've got the little knot here. Actually, I missed the knot up here. Now, another thing that you can do is take your eraser for highlights. It doesn't have to be just with the pencil. So you might like the results you get there. And this one's the Tombow Mono Eraser, so that's really nice for fine detail. I mean, not as fine details you can get with a pencil, but it's a lot thinner than your usual eraser. If you, another thing you can do, I think I have one over here. Did I put it? Yes. So if you've got an eraser like this, this one's quite a bit larger than the Tombow Mono Eraser. If you have one of these, you can take a razor blade. I don't know if you can see, I've cut it here and here. So when I hold it to the side, I can get a thin line with what's really a thick eraser. Of course, you end up wasting some because you're cutting parts off, but something to be aware of. Let's see, test for lazy. Yes, I did get that. I'm apparently just not looking at it. My phone isn't vibrating. It's supposed to make a noise. I guess we're just gonna get notifications throughout the video when, let's see how annoying that is um, when do Discord stuff comes in. It's relevant to the live stream though. I need to know when stuff comes in. Okay, so we'll get some of those. Don't forget, you can bid on the this drawing now. I mean, whatever it comes out with, but it's not gonna be bad. I'm doing it, so it should be good. If it's not, I'll refund everybody's money or whoever won, it's gonna be good, not a problem. Okay, we've got a definite highlight. Actually, I wanna get more of a shadow over here. And that auction ends at not, no, 10 p.m. Central Time. So you have a couple of hours left to get, or not even a couple hours anymore, huh? An hour and a half left to get any bids in. Oh, it's up to $30 now, yay! Now the pressure's on, I have to make it look good. As soon as there's a bid, I feel like it really has to be good now. Somebody's getting this. So I'm layering some more of the shadows. Okay, and we've got this whole mess over here. Now you can get these soft tools where they're shade, there's more of an angle to them. I have them, I'm just too lazy to get up and get it but it does make it a little bit easier sometimes. But see how, look, I just shaded, like filled that in. It's a little bit easier than just using the pencil. Now I'll go on and correct like where I need it to be darker or lighter. And see again, it's not just a shadow all the way along that one branch. Let 
the thing that you want to start paying attention to in your drawings, if you're trying to make them look more realistic, really pay attention to your values. My stick, my branch, not going to be exact. It doesn't need to be. Get those values in there. Dark's dark enough. Light's light enough. Pay attention to where those go. That is going to make your work look way more realistic. So I've got some detailing in here. My branch is shaped a little bit different because that little smudgy dead leaf it looks like or maybe growing leaf that's on the tip look, would look weird because in black and white it doesn't look like a whole lot of anything just wait here can you see wade is dreaming look at him twitching he's dreaming of running oh and even breathing heavy because he's running so hard greyhounds are funny okay and don't feel like everything needs to be blended out. Sometimes it's going to look best just with those pencil lines. And when I work in charcoal, I personally really like a more sketchy look. So like here, I'm not going to blend that. I like that charcoal rough look with, with charcoal. That's not redundant at all. Okay, moving down. I'll finish up this branch and then I'm going to show you, we'll share uh, the boys' Patreon ad. Okay, whoops. I'm having trouble with the, the size of my paper is too big for the size where I'm trying to fit it. There we go. The challenge is real. So we get these highlights in there. Now this whole area under the bird is much more shaded. So I'm just gonna use this tool and smudge that in. If you don't have this tool, you don't have, have charcoal powder, to, what? English powder, don't worry. You can just go ahead and fill that in with your pencil. It may just take a bit longer. And we've got a highlight that comes through here and it's gonna highlight right around his foot. So we're gonna lighten that. Now I'm gonna take the eraser to lighten some of this too. So it's not quite as light as the pencil. So we've got a little bit of the stick coming out here. As I drop things. Now I've got a smudge there. I can erase it if it won't erase. Oh, it erased fine. But if it didn't erase, I can just smudge over it. Blend, it would have blended out. So sometimes you're going to have things, no matter what medium you work in, things are going to go wrong. A child is going to come up and stick their hand in it. Or you're going to stick your hand in it. You're going to drop. This is my thing. I drop my paintbrush and it'll hit and leave a mark. I do that all the time. I'm so clumsy. So that stuff is going to happen. Don't freak out when it does. Just learn how to fix it. You want to make sure when you, it's better early on to figure out how to fix mistakes. Don't panic. Don't throw it away. Don't start over. Just figure out how to fix those mistakes. That is a very important part of art. This is another area. I'm going to leave it more sketchy. I'm going to get some variation, some areas a little bit darker. I'm just using my medium pencil now. Okay, let's get this a little bit darker. I want the extra soft just as it moves down here. God, every time I use charcoal, I forget how much I love soft tools. I don't know why I don't use them on every single thing. They're so nice to blend with. And that I can show you some of the different shapes. These don't have the, the spongy things on them, but you can see these different shapes you can get. So if I wanted a tiny little detail, this angled one is going to be really handy. And I think I linked my Amazon affiliate links at the time of recording this video, and there were only like 10 of these left in stock. So if that's something you're going to get soon, they'll restock them for sure. But right now on Amazon, it was only showing 10. So you may want to get in early on that if you needed some. But they always restock, so it's not a big deal. And it, you may be able to get them from other sellers too. I just thought I would mention that because I noticed that when I was making the listing. This is a smaller area, so I'm just going to do it with the pencils instead of the soft tool. And then, of course, you can get those at, at like lick.com or anywhere like that. It should have it. Now 
I don't want to smudge this everywhere. Look how I'm leaving the background of the paper showing through. This is going to give me more of that variation that I'm looking for. Some texture in there, little squiggles. When I'm working on something like this, this isn't huge. I'm capturing the general shapes, not every single detail. One of the things, especially as new artists, we have a tendency to get hung up on all the tiny details. Don't worry so much about that. Worry about your general lights and darks when you're in, especially like this with this size. If I was working big, I'm going to go with every detail because it would look weird if you didn't. But in this case, you don't need to. Hit your lights and darks. It's a really good practice to get used to working in sketchbooks. You can do things really little where you are dependent only on your general shapes, your general shadows, lights, and darks. You can't, there's no room for details. So, I mean, I know there are some people who are miniature artists, and that's not really what I'm talking about here, but that is a really good way to practice paying attention to where you should put more detail versus just watching your values. One of the things I was surprised with last week when I did this, I thought that the sound of charcoal was going to be horribly annoying. The microphone really didn't pick much of it up. Okay, let's get that last part of the branch in. I think this should be softened out a lot more. I'm a little bit too dark on some of this. But just lightly sketch over it. And then we've got this one. Okay, I have to bust out the charcoal powder again. Oh, I tightened it too much. There we go. So just a little bit. I would rather way too little than too much. Too much and you make a hot mess. You can always layer more. That triangle one would be really handy if I had prepared for this and actually had it ready. And again, if you're asking questions that I'm not answering right now, I will. that's something that will probably be get answered at the end of the live stream when we come back through and, and start going through those. So I'm not ignoring you on purpose. Well, actually, I'm totally ignoring you on purpose. That's actually what I'm doing. I'm, uh, but I will come back to those questions. I was really only planning on using that charcoal powder today because I haven't used it in a really long time. I've been out forever. And I say out. I don't know where it went. Like, I know I had some. I think I lost it. It's probably – oh, my hands are a hot mess now. It's probably around here somewhere. But anyway, it's been a very long time since I've used it. I'm hooked again. Okay. So we've got some highlights. Now, I'm resting my hand on the bottom of my drawing board, not on the artwork itself. Since I don't have the paper there. See how these lines, look how I'm curving them slightly. This is going to help that branch look not so flat. And even here, I'll come through and get some curved. See, I'm curving it in and it'll help that branch have that more rounded look instead of looking so flat. So we've got the two stems. I just want everyone to know it was 82 degrees here today. So, you know, I'm just rubbing that in. I know a lot of you guys are up in the snow right now. We are definitely not. Okay. Oh, no, that's not what I needed. If you haven't already, please like this video. Please share this video. Actually, just a quick kind of plug for myself or any YouTuber that you like, share our content as much as you can on Facebook, wherever. Uh, Facebook, MeWe. Um, it's a much better platform. It's like Facebook when Facebook was good. But if you can share our content, that helps. YouTube's not notifying people half the time more often than not. Most people, I mean, or if they're not just straight out unsubscribing people, that's happened to me recently. 
um, I was unsubscribed from one of my friend's fish videos. Like he's one of my favorite creators and I was unsubscribed. So I definitely didn't do that one myself. Anyway, if you can share, like this video, comment on everything. If you can't every video, just say nice, say whatever. YouTube likes it. It makes them think, oh, other people might want to see this. Heck, I don't even care if you watch the video. If you see one of my stuff come up, come up, just comment and say hi. I'd be happy with that. I mean, obviously watching's better. It really helps when you do watch videos, but sharing them too will really help since YouTube can't be troubled to do that anymore, apparently. If you're not already, if you sign up to my email newsletter, I let you know the date. Right now I've been sending it out on Tuesday, letting everyone know when the live streams are going up, and then I send out the reminder five minutes before the live stream. So if you're not getting notified, that'll help. Okay, I'm liking this branch and leaf, just that real soft, I love charcoal so much. Okay, so the boys, before we move on to the little chickadee, the boys have made an advertisement for you. Without treats, these puppies are so sad. Your Patreon pledge of only $4 or more gives them cookies of happiness. Act now and the bad cow gets a treat too. Oh, and you also get over 300 art lessons and a new one every single week, plus other rewards. Sign up at patreon.com slash lockery. I'm a dork. That amused me way too much. Okay. Also, side note, don't donate to the ASPCA. If you want to donate to shelters, like, because that's kind of what that's based off of, of, donate to your actual local humane society or local rescues. They do actual work and actually save animals. ASPCA, they're a lobbying group. Their money just goes towards advertising. That's the, like helping animals. If they're helping it, it's only to be on camera to look like they are, but that's not what they actually do. Local shelters and local rescues are where you want to donate to help to like genuinely make a difference in an animal's life. Okay. Um, so but now we are going to move on to the chickadee. Whoops. As I knock my microphone over. So I'm going to do the same thing. I am loving charcoal powder again. So I'm going to get my base with the chickadee that way. Actually, before I do that, I want to block in his eye. So just going to make his little circly eye so I don't lose that and his beak. Let's get his beak in too before I smudge the heck out of that. I'm just going to use the shading tool to shade the top of the beak right now. So that will have a highlight. Okay, that gives me the majority of that there. Now, back to the charcoal powder. I keep wanting to call it graphite powder because graphite powder I use fairly regularly. I'm used to saying that, so my brain is shutting down and wanting to call it the wrong thing. Okay, so the cap is on the top. I'm just going to get that medium tone in there. This is where those smaller soft tools really come in handy. Don't tell the hounds, but I saved treats so they could have one during the stream. They don't know they're in here, though. They wouldn't be laying down right now if they did. Or, well, they'd be laying down. They just wouldn't be sleeping. They'd be staring at me. So I'm just going to go over, fill that in. I'm even going to fill in the shadow on the bird here. Man, I should have done this on the Kestrel last week. This, I forget how fast this goes. Really, all of this I can just go over. You can see as I go over even the white lines, I can still see the white lines there.
Okay, that's about as dark as I can get it without going back over with a pencil. So it's fairly dark, but not as dark as what I'd really want that end result to be. Oops, that was a little too dark. Blend that out. Okay, nice base layer there. Really wish I remembered to bring my little rocket thing in here. Okay. The paintbrush, um, there is a question here from Rose, asked if we need the sponge brush or if we can get the same effect with the um, powder and paintbrush. The problem with the paintbrush, it's not going to get as dark and it's going to make a mess. You are going to have charcoal powder everywhere except where you wanted it. So it doesn't give you very good results. I definitely prefer these soft tools. I mean, you can try it. I think you'd have an easier time with like a Q-tip or what do you call it in other countries, cotton swab. That may work even better. The, the brush just, it's like the brush holds more and just spreads it everywhere except where you wanted it to go. So doesn't work super well that way. Okay. Now I'm going to come through, let's start getting some of the shadows in, the deeper areas, and I want to pay attention to the direction of the feathers. I'm using the medium pencil, now I have to double check, I'm meant to be using medium. Um, using the medium, look how these feathers move out. We've got some little dots, got some little lines, just a variation of everything in there. Get a ring right around that eye. And then the feathers start moving this direction. And if you, even if you're not following along, if you want to see, just see the reference photo I'm looking at, that's over on my website. Link is in the description. So we're really paying attention to the direction here. See how these start moving around? You really want to watch that, whether it be fur or feathers, they, you don't want to make everything go the same direction. If you do, you just made a flat cartoon. Soften it, but not all of it. I still want to see those lines. And then I'm going to take my white pencil. I've got a little bit of a highlight coming across the top here. We've also got a highlight on that eye. And I don't want that to be super, super bright. See how going over the black, it just made it a gray? That's all I need there. I want it to look glossy, not like the shiny mark on a person's eye. Okay, I'm going to sharpen it. Now, the sharpener for the white pencil works really well. This is just my metal comb sharpener. I don't have any problems sharpening those. Those rarely break. These guys, when I get in, especially the extra soft ones, they are so, so brittle that I definitely find it to be easier if, if it starts breaking. And this is a new sharpener, and sometimes it'll still break. So if that's happening, using an X-Acto knife or like a razor blade. Um, oh, I'm showing weapons on on YouTube, is that safe? But if you use that, you can kind of shave it down easier, oftentimes without breaking the lead. So that's a good way to go. And this paper is a nine by 12. When you mat it down, you would want to mat it as an eight by 10. So those who are bidding on the auction, link in the description. I think the bid right now is only at $30. So you can get something for pretty cheap. Um, as an original, it's going to be pretty when I'm done. I promise. Don't be scared. So again, watch the direction here. And right now my artwork is going to look slightly skewed just because of the way that the camera is positioned. Now that sharpened, this is the extra soft, that sharpened to kind of a, a scary fine point. Don't push too hard here, that will break. And that auction ends, whoops, see, <laughs> All right, bro. wow, that's new. It's not, it doesn't, I don't usually have a break after I started like that. The whole thing snapped off. That was more impressive than I expected. Oh yeah, the whole, I mean, it's just breaking now every time I try to sharpen. And this is a brand new blade. So that's not because of the blade. It's just the joys of charcoal. So let me sharpen that really quick by shaving it off. And it's possible that this lead is just like broken um, further down too, if it's ever been dropped. And I always order these through the mail, so I'm sure they've been dropped a lot. Okay, now it's been shaven down with a um, X-Acto knife. Now, another thing to keep in mind with the pencils like these, get a lot. You saw my containers. I have a lot of my charcoal pencils because sometimes you will have a night where they will not stop breaking. Nothing you do will stop them from breaking. If you burn through the whole one and you wanted to work, you better have a backup. So 
get a they're very inexpensive get a lot of these when you place your orders um if you order out well if you whether you order online or buy in person that's something that you really want to do okay back to the little sky chicken so let's take our tool here I'm just going to soften that out a bit Highlight right across the beak just to clean that up. Now I can pull some of the white into the black as well. Don't go too crazy there. And I'm going to switch over to the medium pencil here so the lines are a little bit cleaner, not quite so smudgy. Now that I do want to soften down before I put the white. I want it dark, but not quite that, that dark. We've got a few darker areas that are going to go in between the white, so I'll just go ahead and sketch some of those in. Okay, back to the general's white. Start working on these little feathers. Now you really want to pay attention to the direction of these. And we want to let that background paper show through. So even if you had started on this with a white paper, if you shaded your background in, you should be working against a gray regardless at this point. But here I want to let the gray of my paper show. Let's make his cheek look a little bit poofier by overlapping some of that right over. No, the weapon and my Band-Aid are not related. It was a different weapon. A hose I was trying to fix. Okay, and then back here again. Now we can come back through and add some darker areas too. Um, so if this doesn't feel light enough in some of these areas, we'll just darken what's next to it and it'll make the light areas seem lighter. So if you're working on something and your lights don't feel light enough, make what's next to it darker. Or if your darks don't seem dark enough, make what's next to that lighter. By hyping up that contrast of one, it'll make the other appear lighter or darker. really soft area in here so I can go a little bit more solid. Fill that in more. Let's see, looks like we've got a question. My phone would open. Susan said, have you used tinted charcoal? I have some from Derwent. I've not really played with much. I may have used it some at some point with Smart Art Box, but not enough for like a full project where I can give much of an opinion one way or another on it. Now, the brown charcoal, the sepia tones, that I have used quite a bit. Not in a long time. I was actually just talking to my husband about that. I need to get some more. I love that look. That It gives you that like old photo look. It is so cool. So I will definitely be getting some more of that soon. I don't know. I probably just ran out. I doubt I lost it. But I used to use that exclusively. I didn't used to use black very often at all. Okay, let's take the medium. Actually, I do want to sharpen this a bit. I'm not even going to bother with a sharpener. Let's just use the razor blade. Okay. This guy is definitely going to be cute. I'm really happy already with what he, how he's coming out. The great thing about charcoal, it's just such a fast medium. So if you need to practice fur, if you need to practice feathers or hair, let's say you're, you're, you just suck at people hair, practice it in charcoal, paying attention to your lights and darks where you're not really focused as much on detail as lights and darks and the shapes of things. 
you will learn so much faster than in any other medium. And then you can take what you learned with the charcoal, which is inexpensive and fast, and apply it to whatever other medium you like. And I'm not sure on the brand of, of sepia charcoal. Um, I haven't even, I haven't bought any in so long. I thought it was Generals, but I could be wrong. If Generals has it, I will be buying from them. But if it's not, I'm not sure. I think Derwent makes charcoal pencils too. I've not tried them, so I, I don't have an opinion one way or another, but I would like to try them. Now this is getting a bit solid. I can get a little bit more wispy lines in here. I'll come back through with the black pencil to help with that. Here can be a little bit softer. Now here, as I start building up these feathers, if it ends up being a little bit too, um, too defined or too light, which it is, I'm just gonna blend over. I'll just soften it out a bit. Just a few strokes with the blending tool will take care of that. And once I get most of this mapped up, I can go ahead and start focusing on correcting any details or values. But right now, this is that, that mapping it out section. I'm just really lightly. I am not adding much. I'm like barely, barely dragging the shading tool across the paper here. So I want to soften it, but I don't want to lose those lines either. Darken a few of these areas up. We still have a bit over an hour to bid on this guy. Now you can see he's starting to come out good. Now he's worth a bid. I'm really liking the way the auction site I set up on my website is working out. It worked out really well last week. Unfortunately, that is only available to the US just for shipping purposes. I'll do something smaller in the future where I can sell um, internationally too. I'm gonna darken these a lot now. I'm gonna use my pencil for that. Separate that branch from the tail there just a bit. Now, once this is done, I'm going to spray this with Spectra Fix, and I'll show you that product in just a moment. And hopefully, I'll remember to use it. I know last week I said I would show you spraying it. I totally forgot. Let's see if we can remember to do that this week. Normally, when I work in charcoal, I will spray spray it with uh, Spectra Fix a few times. And the reason that I didn't hear or that I don't on the stream is once I spray it, I can't work again for another 15 minutes. It's going to be a problem time-wise. But Spectrafix is this product here. It's linked in the video description. I sound like I'm just trying to sell everything to you guys. I'm just telling you what I got. But um, the Spectrafix is what I use. And I put it in this fine mist sprayer. If you spray out of the bottle that it comes in, which you can, you get heavy droplets. And sometimes those droplets will sort of create a little dot that doesn't go away. You can always see it. Less likely to happen, very minimal, if you use a fine mist sprayer. But with the, the Spectrafix, I find that it doesn't get darker like a lot of the, like if I use, um, um, I have to stop saying, um, I have to edit all these out later. I, if I use, 
any other fixative, it darkens it a lot. And then I have to go back over and pull out my whites again. With Spectrafix, as long as you do a fine mist, you keep it at a distance, I really don't find that to be an issue. So just a cool thing there. So let's get the hint of some of these toes. You're not going to see a ton of detail. And then just a few little highlights to shape out those toes. Those little nails. Again, you're not going to see a lot of detail here. This is just your general light and dark. Oops, I grabbed the soft when I meant the medium. That's going to blend really smudgy. Not a big deal. Susan said, I'd love the background. Yeah, the background with that charcoal, just getting that kind of soft, misty look. Such a cool feel. Speaking of a misty look, I want to do um, one of these as a uh, landscape for you guys soon in charcoal too. But that kind of misty trees poking through the mist. So... I need to find the right reference photo for that. Okay, now we are just going to adjust. Everything's pretty much in. It's just adjusting little things, little, um, where do we want it a little bit brighter? So like here, I really want that to stand out more. So I'm gonna turn the pencil to the side. I'm gonna push a little bit harder, really pull that out. I want this to be a lot lighter softer so I don't want to cover I don't want to do that everywhere I want to still be able to see some of those feathers I just want to soften that out a bit and brighten it up here is a lot brighter so watch those values okay where's the medium there we go For this paper, I'm using the Canson Me Tens. I use the rough side. It does give you a bumpier look, which I love for charcoal, personal preference. But it also gives, it's a little bit grippier. It gives the, the charcoal a bit more to hang on to versus using a smoother paper or the smooth side of this. Technically, you can work on the smooth side. It's going to look fine. I just like the grippy, a little bit grippier on the rough side. It's not a huge, huge difference um, between the two sides. So if you drew something out and realized, oh my gosh, I did it on the wrong side, I would just work on whichever side it's already drawn on. I wouldn't redo it. But that's why I choose one over the other. So as I go through here, I'm just going to get the hint. A few of these feathers. I'm not going to sit there and try to put every little feather that you see on the reference photo. I just need to get a hint of some of them. Round off a bit. It's so close to being done. So this guy, whoever gets him, well, if you mat it on your own, I would definitely go with a black mat um, over a colored mat. Or if I mat it, it'll be black too. But the black will really like center everything off. Or it'll keep attention in the artwork without drawing attention away from it. It'll make the blacks. Actually, I'll show you that now. When we mat this, if you put a black mat over it, look at how it pulls the darks out. Well, I need. I'll zoom the camera out in a moment. But it really pulls the blacks out a lot. Now, if I were to put a white mat on it, it's going to make the white, the whoops, wrong camera. It would make the white areas stand out more. So the mat you use will make a big difference. A black mat with a white inner mat would look great. Anything black and white like that. If you haven't already, you do me a huge favor and hit the like button. I'll love you forever. I mean, I'm going to ask you to do it again next week, but you know, I'll love you till next week.
It helps let YouTube know that other people should watch the video too. Now don't overdo this. This is not something that I should see a ton of detail on. If I'm working bigger, absolutely. This size, no. I just want to make sure I'm getting a really good hint, the hint of feathers here and there, and I've got my highlights and shadows where I want them. Let's get some of these darks a bit darker. Now, I have used in the past, I used to, believe it or not, I used to work in pastels, but I've used, it was a real problem with those, where some of the fixatives, I sprayed it, and it made my lights just disappear completely gone. And that's why I use Spectrafix and only Spectrafix for pet, for whether pan pastels or with um, charcoal, because I really don't find that to be an issue with this. But man, was that a headache. I'd have it completely done, put it over, put the fix it over and then have to go add my highlights back in. As long as you do this light, look at how just adding that little bit of area, a bit darker, how much better that looks. And this is what I was talking about earlier, where it kind of comes and goes. It skips. So I've got areas that are a little bit lighter, and then it gets dark again, light again, dark again. You've got, got to get that variation. It'll look much more natural than just dark all the way on one side. It'll make your branch look really flat if you just shade one side and not the other. Whenever you're doing anything with nature, variation, oh, I almost forgot to finish the tail. Oh my gosh. Variation is such a big diff big deal. So let's say you're drawing a grassy field. Variation in that grass, you don't want to just make one stroke again and again and again. It looks too uniform. It looks like a cartoon. You're going to have bent pieces of grass that go up and then switch direction. Variation. Some are going to be brown and dead. Variation in everything will make things look much more realistic. This outer edge is really light, so I'm pushing quite a bit harder with that pencil. And then the inside, I'll shade to darken that back up. Get some little dots on his toes just to stand, make that stand out a bit more. And then on his leg. Just lightly going to go over this, tone that down. I'm not toning down enough. Let's try that with the medium pencil then. There we go. That looks better. Much better. And if you have a question, um, any art related question, anything, go ahead and you can leave it now. I'll answer. We're going to be coming back. I'm um, almost done with this guy and then we'll get to answering your questions. And we'll talk about if it's okay to rinse your acrylic paints down the drain. I'm going to let mine, I'm going to actually lighten it up here just a bit so that it fades off the paper a bit more and it kind of draws your, your dark area stay where I want your attention to stay. And what a difference just lightening that up. Now you're focused more in the dark spots. Oh, I love how this guy came out. I would definitely hang him on my wall. That's how I decide if a painting or drawing is finished would I hang this on my wall? If not, it's not done yet. Or I need better ideas. Yeah, I think that's it. Now, I'm going to show you how to, now, I reserve the right to tape this to my shirt. I reserve the right to decide tomorrow with fresh eyes. I may make a couple of little adjustments, clean something up here or there. It would be very, very minor, but I may do that. Now, the next thing we want to do, I'm going to pull this camera back a little bit. I want to talk to you about signing the work and matting it. And then I'm going to show you how I, easy it is just to spray the fix, fix, Spectra Fix. I can't talk. So let me move this back one second. 
so you can see it. Okay, that's a little bit better. You'll see enough anyway. So with this mat, this is an 11 by 14 inch. The opening is going to be for an eight by 10. What I wanna do is figure out where that would be positioned. So whether I mat this for the buyer or the buyer mats it themselves, I wanna make sure my signature is not gonna be off the mat. So then I wanna decide where do I wanna sign my name? Do I wanna sign it here or off to the side here? In this case, I actually think it would look better with the signature here than here. I could sign across sideways there. Nope, I, I, I want to do it over here. I think that would look nicer. I just put that there so I know where it'll go. I'm going, whoops, I'm going to do it very light though. I don't want to push really hard here. My third piece of 2023. Okay, so now, the reason that that is important, look at how it's up here. And when you're matting or framing something or, sign, gosh, I can't talk. If you're signing something, there's a good chance you, you're thinking, I'll just sign it across the bottom. No, because when this is matted, that would have been completely covered. I just want that right about, actually, I'd like that. I want that leaf off a little bit. So right about there is where I would personally mat that. Maybe a little lower there. So this help, it makes such a difference in the black of the mat focuses the darks. The darks are just pulled out so much here. And then again, that signature is not super in your face, but it, it just has a nice balance. So when I'm deciding where to sign stuff, I will always take my pencil and hold it up to see, because it's not, a, there's not always like one answer. It's going to depend on the piece. Sometimes it will look better if you just have a little bit of extra weight on this corner or a little bit of extra weight. And that signature does add weight. So that's an important thing to talk about. When you sign something, I don't like, I know some people will always sign like red. Okay, it's in your face, but it adds weight to the piece. The painting itself now, that signature holds weight. And if it's pulling the viewer's attention in a direction or adding, like it just pulls that part of the painting down or drawing down. So that's why I hold the, or the pencil up to see where do I want that weight to be located. And then I will always choose a color that is somewhere else in the painting or drawing. I won't do a bright red on something like this. I My signature needs to be there. That's what's going to add value. But also that's not the point of the painting. So I I'll, I know some people will sign on the back of the work also pointless. Sign sign the front. Your signature is a part of it. Just be smart about how you sign that. So I want to show you with misting this. And I'm going to back this camera up quite a bit for just a moment. Now, the main reason I'm backing it up this far, I am, I don't know if you can see me. No, you can, really can't tell. I'm like, I'm more than an arm's length right now away from the art. I should get closer to the microphone. I'm more than an arm's length away from the microphone. No, let's try that one more time. I'm more than an arm's length away from the artwork. I don't want to spray this up here. You do that, you're going to have a, it is going to make things dark. It's going to be terrible. I am back. I mean, that artwork is probably, you can't hear me now. The artwork is probably six inches away from where I'm going to be lightly misting this and just very, make sure it comes out right. Done. No more. Let it dry and then do that again. Don't do some heavy, I mean, it was barely anything. I'm not sure how well that caught on camera, but barely anything. You do not want to oversaturate this. Just a light misting, let it dry completely, and then you can put another misting if you want. If you got a little crazy, you went too heavy, you made it too dark, go ahead and bring your highlights out. Now, ideally when I work in charcoal, I like to do this in multiple layers. Let me move this camera. You still have time to bid on this guy. I'm yelling into the microphone. Okay, so you do, that's a, it's not layering right, there we go. Gotta mess with my stuff. Um, you can spray fix, spectra fix, and ideally that's what you'll do. 
as you work. So if you're doing multiple layers, halfway through, a quarter of the way through, do a light misting of Spectre Fix. It's gonna help that those first layers adhere even more. Now, it doesn't finish it. Like if I run my hand across this when it's dry, it's going to smudge. There's nothing that's going to, you can put enough on, on charcoal that will make it ever not smudge. But we wanna make it adhere to the paper as much as possible. And the more layers we do as we're working, the better that's going to be. That's not possible while I'm working on something like this. And this doesn't have that many layers, so it's not really a risk. But you can spray it and like tomorrow, I'm going to come back tomorrow and decide, okay, I want a few touch-ups. I want this a little lighter, a little darker, a little bit more detail here. I'm going to do that tomorrow and then I'll spray it again. So you can keep working over that. It, it's not like putting a varnish on an acrylic painting and then that's it. You're not going to paint over that. You can absolutely go back over this as you, as you want. So really cool product there. Okay. Next. So one of the things I wanted to talk about, let me position this, move myself away. Um, the, hold on, water. Actually, I take that back. Before we move on, we have another ad for you. Sushi wants a cookie too. Sign up for Patreon. That one was much shorter. Okay, so as we move on, we've got the questions are coming in. So before we do that, I wanna talk about can you rinse your brushes, your acrylic paints? Can you run that down your drain? Are you going to clog your drain? Yes and no. So what you wanna do, keep in mind, acrylics are plastic. When they dry, like I have actual, can you see that like it's a piece of plastic. That's what dried to my palette. It's a big old chunk, like a full on bendy, that's plastic. So you, if you are not doing this right and you're just rinsing huge chunks of acrylic paint down the drain, that potentially could cause issues. Not super likely because as it's running with the water, the water's going to thin that out. But I, like, why risk it? Just don't put the thick, thick chunks like that down the drain. That's not a great idea. So instead, what you want to do, let me get a brush on here. I'll do a sample for you. I am not as prepared for this as I thought I was. Um, sure, this will work. Let's say I've been painting. We'll use this as an example. I've got this huge chunk of paint. Maybe it's not that big of a chunk. It's a little bit overdone. But let's say I have a huge chunk of paint on there. I don't want to take this and just rinse it directly into my water container. One, that's going to make my water container get dirty very fast. It's also going to create a thicker sludge at the bottom, which I'd rather not have the thick, thick sludge going down the drain. So instead, what you want to do is before you rinse this in your water cup as you're painting, wipe as much paint as you can get off on a paper towel first. So there's not much paint left on there. Now you're going to take that and rinse that in your water container, which I'm going to do right now so I don't ruin this. Now, both my brush and my water container, I have stained water. It's not really that thick, chunky plastic. That can go down the drain. I can have that super dirty, even if it's a little sludgy. I can pour that down the drain, no problems. It's those thicker chunks. That's where there could potentially be a risk if that somehow dried in your pipe, that might be a problem. Now, on the flip side, acrylic paint, you run hot water through it, it's gonna loosen up and break, off, break up. So it's not... It's not as scary as you might think. I know I'm showing you the plastic chunks, but the real like you're probably not going to flush or rinse that thick of chunks down there, but don't rin don't rinse thick chunks of paint down the drain is the moral of this story. If you wipe it off on your paper towel first, then rinse it in that water, that water can go down the drain. Your brush could be rinsed in the sink with that water going down the drain, no problem. Now, where I have seen problems where people assumed it was the paint that clogged it, using my methods, the safe methods, where I know I used to teach at a place that also taught cake decorating classes. And the cake decorators kept vi like breaking the rules. You are not supposed to put fondant, is that how you say it? Fondant, fondant, whatever, that frosting. You don't put that down the drain. That is greasy and absolutely clogs drains like crazy. So what was happening is they would have a class, they would clog up the drain, but we didn't realize it was clogged yet. My class would come in and paint and they would throw the safe water down, but that safe water has paint color in it. It has the pigment 
that would catch on the the cake batter or cake um, frosting stuff. And when the plumbers would come in to unclog it, they pull out the cake batter, but it looks like paint. It was never the paint. The paint wasn't the problem. The paint just got stopped up with the water, like with everything else. The paint was not clogging it. And so one of the places I was working at, they they overreached, I guess, a little bit or ju- like they just – they got paranoid and they insisted it was the the paint that was clogging it. So no paint, definitely no no cake decorating stuff. The cake decorators kept flushing it down the drain though. So that was amazing. But yeah, it's not going that the only times I've seen where people were like, no, I saw paint was clogging it. It was because they were flushing the or rinsing out their cake decorating, um, that greasy uh the topping, the frosting, whatever. Um, they were they were rinsing the frosting down the drain. That's what was clogging it. The paint just happened to get caught up in the mix. But as long as you're not the dri- – I can't talk. Moral of the story, as long as you're not not dripping that huge, thick, chunky paint, you're not going to have any problems. You can rinse, rinse it just fine. Just wipe the brush off on a paper towel first. Okay. Yeah, and that's a um, – Let's see. Uh, Jason said, can't you just rent, wait until the paint dries and toss it in the trash? Well, yeah, but what I'm talking about is when it's been rinsed. So you've got your container full of, of dirty water that you've been rinsing your brushes out on. Or let's say your brush is dirty and you just – it's a big brush because I've had that happen. The brush is just too big to fit in that and I need to go rinse it in the sink. Just wipe as much of the thick paint off as you can get first. That's what we're talking about. Like what's dried on your palette? Yeah, obviously that you're just going to let dry and throw away. What we're talking about is your paint cup, paint water sort of thing and the paintbrushes itself. Okay, so we've got some questions coming in. Let's go ahead and get to these and you guys can go. We're doing good time-wise. We've still got 45 minutes to hang out now and chat. So any questions you've got, go ahead and leave those now. Okay, so Cat's Art Pick said, uh, let's see, have you ever been hindered from creating art because of pain in the hands? Yeah, sort of. Okay, yes. Mainly from um, colored pencils. Colored pencils I find to be much harsher. And before I started blending with OMS, that's what – let's word this in a way. Think, Lisa. Put put your words together in an order that people will understand. So the, the main reason I've had issues with my hands while working, painting doesn't cause any problems. Charcoal doesn't cause any problems. Colored pencil when I used to burnish. This is why you guys don't see me burnish very often, why I moved to using odorless mineral spirits instead of burnishing. Burnishing is when you're pushing really hard, adding a lot of pressure. Oh my gosh, the paint in my hand had gotten so bad. I'd nearly given up on colored pencils. That and I got sick of Prismacolor breaking constantly. But that I pretty much didn't want to work in them anymore because of the pain. Once I found OMS for blending odorless mineral spirits for blending out my colored pencil, oh, that was so much better. Took care of it. I really don't suffer from much pain-wise for me. I do have arthritis in that hand still, but as long as it's I'm not pushing really hard, not a problem. Okay. Michael Perry asked, do you use a workable fixative? Does it work for you? Is Spectrafix a workable fixative? So I think I already covered that one pretty much. Um, yeah, yes, you can work right over it. Just for, I, so I only use it for pastels or for charcoal. For other mediums, like if I'm working in in powder blender, I'm going to use the the brush and pencil products. Um, and that is reworkable. Liddy said, do you enjoy port doing portraits? If so, what medium do you prefer? Oils. And charcoal, I would say oils first, then charcoal, then graphite. And the charcoal and graphite can switch. It depends on, am I in the mood to do super fine, tiny, tiny detail? Then graphite. If I want something loose and like just a softer look, I prefer charcoal just because that's how I like to work in charcoal. It's not that charcoal can't get fine detail. It's just easier in graphite than charcoal. So anyway, those two are interchangeable, but those would be my favorite mediums to do portraits. Oh, colored pencils I actually do enjoy too. So I would say first oil paints, then charcoal and graphite, and then colored pencil. And that's all personal preference. Rose said, bit of a weird question. That's how you know it's going to be good. I hope it's good now. Look, look, you built it up and we don't know. Uh, does the texture feeling of certain pencils or charcoal on paper make you shiver? Yes, and that's why I don't work in pastels. I can do pan pastels. I cannot do uh, regular pastel pencils at all. Like, I, it freaks me out. I cannot. Yeah, no, yes. Um Paul said, how do you keep your artwork from mold and mildew? 
So this is one of those questions that when people, I've seen it before and I, I thought, what do you, why is that a problem? It depends on where you live. I've never lived in an area where there was so much humidity that that was even remotely a concern. So I can't say that I've got any magical trick to to protecting it. I think people will use de dehumidifiers, but it's a matter of keeping your home with a lower humidity. It's not something I've personally experienced because I don't live in an area where that's ever been a problem. I am no help. Jack said, what is something that we are often told as artists, but that annoys you? Oh, I love this question. The biggest one is don't compare yourself to other artists. That's a really good piece of advice if you don't want the artist to improve. Like, are you trying to get them to never get better? If you want to improve, absolutely compare yourself to other artists. Look at somebody else's art who you like, like there's something about it you like better and pick apart why is it that you like theirs better than yours? What specifically? Is it the way they do their lighting, their detailing, their composition, their values? What exactly do you like better about another artist's because now you know what to work on on your own. The That is one of the pieces of advice that drives me crazy. Don't ever compare yourself to another artist. Yes, no, you need to compare yourself to other artists just in the, the learning aspect. I don't mean compare yourself as beat yourself up because yours isn't as good as theirs. Not at all. I'm going to mute this. What I mean is compare it in how can I make mine more like that? If I, if that's the look I'm going for, because we should all have goals. None of us are going to create something that no one's ever seen before as far as style goes. I mean, it's, it's all been done. I know we've all heard that. It's all been done. Pick the style that you like and what is that artist doing differently than you? Comparing yourself to another artist is a great way to improve your work if you're looking at it right. If you're looking at it just as, oh, they're so much better than me. I'm never going to be that good. Yeah, no, that's not helpful. You want to look at it as, why is it better? What is it they're doing that I would like to implement in my own work? That is, is a much better way to look at it that can really help take your work to the next level. Okay, next. Um, Jennifer said, beautiful, Lisa, I've, I've missed watching you create. I'm so happy you're teaching and doing lives. I pulled out my charcoals for the first time in years. That's awesome. Yay. I'm so glad to hear that. Let's see. Next question. I'm going to start a few things this week. Black drafting film and oil paint on wood panel. Have you tried drafting film with colored pencils? Oil with a limited palette. I'm not sure what you're doing. You're mixing oil, like oil paint and colored pencils or oil-based colored pencils? You probably mean oil-based colored pencils. I think my brain's just not working. So I have worked on drafting film. It's interesting. I, I sort of like it and sort of not. I think that's definitely one of those things you've got to get good. It's going to take practice to get good at. It's not like, oh, I'm used to working in hot press watercolor paper. I'll try Cans and Me Tens for the first time and I'm perfect at it. With drafting film, there's a different way that you work, a different way that you um, layer. So I think if you go into it understanding that, watch a few videos on people who are good with it first. That's going to make it a lot easier for you. It was very interesting to work on. I didn't hate it, but I also wasn't like, I can't wait to do this again. I mean, I do want to do it again, but it wasn't something that was like life-changing for me. So going to be personal preference. That's like the theme of today's video is it's personal preference. Let's see. Biggest question of the night. Where did you get those dog beds? They came from Hollywood Feed. You can order them online, hollywoodfeed.com or .org. I'm not sure which, but it's a pet store we have out here. And those are the Mississippi made, I believe. They're made here in the U.S. You can see the boys enjoying. They love these beds. And the great thing about them, oh, I'm turning into an advertisement for them. But the great thing about those beds is that the roll part on the outside and the cushion unzips and you can replace the cushion in the middle. So if they start to flatten now, super easy. And if you have a dog who likes to accidentally, well, I don't think it's so much of an accident. He gets mad. Well, he has separation anxiety. And he there have been too many times where we had him locked in another room and he decided, oh, I can't get to you. I'm going to pee on my bed. I can take every piece of that bed apart and wash it all of it in hot water and it comes out perfect, perfectly clean. I'm neurotic about things being clean, so it works out really well. Also, that's why we call him the bad cow. One of many reasons. But yeah, it they're very, very easy to clean if a dog gets sick on it, anything. You can completely wash it. It's like a thicker canvas. They are wonderful. They went on sale recently for one third of the price off or one third off 
I, I picked up three. Like I went crazy. That was their Christmas present. But they're so, so I had the two old ones for a couple of years. I gave them away. They were still good. But I got new clean ones and they are, that haven't been stained. And the bad cow didn't chew a tube of yellow paint on these. So they're still looking nice. Such a bad cow. Okay, next question. Yeah, it's, uh, what was that? Hollywood Feed, their website. Oh, Michael, thank you so much for the super chat. Oh, yay, I have goosebumps. Oh, I'm going to cry. Why does that always make me tear up? Okay, next. What other methods do you recommend as an alternative to the grid method? Well, it depends on what you're trying to accomplish. I actually would rather freehand completely. I have a, I get better, everything works better for me if I freehand than the grid method. The grid method, when I've used it in the past, it's been years, but it's so easy to, one, you have a tendency to get that more squared look. Like it, it's just, you can tell when someone's used a grid method. It, I think your hand has a tendency to want to follow the straight lines a little too much. So that, and I, I don't know if it's just a matter of how big the grid is or what, but you can really tell when someone's using a grid. But Freehanding it is my preferred method myself, but other methods you can do. Tracing and transfer paper. You Tracing something over and over again will help you to start drawing more accurately on your own. It's a really good tool for those who don't already know how to draw really well. So that I, I think is more useful. I have not seen people who drew with the grid method necessarily improve their drawing skills that much. Not like I have with the just tracing something. You have someone trace something multiple times, they're going to start noticing details they wouldn't have otherwise noticed. And they're getting their lines, they're getting the movement done accurately. And then they they will hopefully move on to freehanding. The goal is not to forever be dependent on, on tracing. Now, for me, I will trace things just to save time. I can freehand anything just fine, but I can save a lot of time by tracing. And then the other method, so tracing and transfer paper, another method would be using a projector. So again, you're technically tracing, but those are, are the methods that I recommend. Okay. Um... Next question, how's your board set up? Vertical, flat, do you have a hand rest? Mine is upright at an easel, just a normal like painting easel is how I work. And that is only because of the arthritis in my neck and my back. I can't look down for any length of time, like 10 minutes of looking down and my back is toast or my neck is toast. So I have to work upright. I am resting my hand on the glass scene, so it's resting directly on the board. But it, before that was an issue for me, I preferred drawing flat. It takes a little getting used to to draw upright. It's definitely better for your posture, but it's also a weird thing to draw upright at an easel. But yeah, I used to draw flat and I just kept a glass piece of glassing under my hand then too. I've never used a, a pat or armrest. Okay. Next. As an artist, how do you keep yourself safe online? Sometimes I worry about posting images of myself with my art. Have you ever had any problems or do you have tips for this? Great question. So for me, I mean, it's always a risk. I try to keep my address off stuff. If somebody wants something bad enough, no one can really hide. We know that. So I just try not to post things. Like I don't post photos of the front of my house. I don't care how cute I make my front landscaping. I'm not posting photos online. No one's going to see it. That's why I spend more time in the backyard where those are the photos I feel more safe posting. No one, I don't post the color of the brick of my house. So even that, I don't really, I, that's the sort of thing that just to make it a little bit easier, I try not to post anything like if there were something around my home that was a recognizable structure, I'm not posting that. So those are things like common sense things, obviously not, I don't post my car at all. Um, I mean, I talk about that it's a Kia Soul, but you don't know what year, you don't know the license plate, you don't know what color. Um, I, I'll, you know, maybe I have posted the car sometimes when I go places, no license plate. So things like that use common sense. I think one of the bigger things that I worry about for people online, like my nephew, he's got a website going. And if you are watching Tyler, this message is for you. But he just started a website and he's selling coloring pages he makes, which is such a cool idea. His website's looking great. I'm super proud of him. But he also mentions on there that he's a 14-year-old boy. That concerns me because one, 14 year old boys, I know because I know them, do dumb things and they don't think things through and they get themselves into trouble. And it, there are so many bad people out there that will groom somebody into, are we allowed to say that? That will groom somebody into 
meeting with them or sending photos or videos or the meeting with them is the thing that really concerns me. They, you know, making you think they're your friend or they're another person your age when they're really not. That concerns me. And I am much, much more concerned for people realizing how easy it is to be catfished or scammed online. You've got a lot of people online will try to make a connection and make friends with you to try to get you to give them money because now you're friends and oh, you want to help your friends because you're a good person, right? You have so many people doing that. I don't trust anybody. Like I, I probably take it to the extreme, but I, I'm concerned like seeing my, my nephew. I'm not sure if him putting on there that he's a 14 year old boy is a good idea. I'm like, uh, yeah, it might help you with sales because people want to help a kid, but also people want to do other things to kids. And that is a concern for me. So I'm more worried for young people than I am our age. Our age, I'm just, don't let somebody scam you into thinking they're your friend and having, oh, can you send me a gift card? Yeah, I, I had a, my car broke down. I need money. That sort of thing is very very, very common. So that's more the scam I see older people getting in, getting hooked with. But it, it's just so easy to be scammed by stuff. But as far as people finding my home, I mean, it is possible. People get doxxed all the time. It is possible someone can figure something out. But what I try to do, I've used my, I have a PO box. And so my email newsletter has my PO box on it. If I ship something to somebody, I'm going to put my PO box on that. So things like that you can do to try to to minimize risk. But I also won't post like, hey, I'm at this location right at this minute. If I want to post that I'm at like the fish store when I go to Aqua Studios, I'm going to post once I'm home. I'll post where I was, but I don't necessarily need people to know where I am. Now, I'm not prone to having stalker. I've had a few cases that were weird and questionable, but some people get bigger and more popular. That would be a concern. I would not want people knowing where I was. Okay, let's see. Next question. And I have had, I actually had someone, speaking of just weird stuff, weird stories, I had someone once, talk, people will find your address. So years, years after I'd moved out, I the address I used to live at, somebody, their neighbor received something for me from one of my fans. I don't know how my fan knew I lived at that address in the first place. But they didn't even get that right. They sent it to the neighbor and then they gave it to the person who lives there now and they gave it to me. That was weird. Like, I don't know who, I don't know who the person was. I don't know why. It was just, yeah, it, you get some weird stuff happening. Let's see. Next question. Do you sometimes use watercolor paper for your charcoal and graphite drawing? I used to. I do not anymore. I don't like the texture. It's smoother, so it's going to be fine, easier to get fine detail. So I'm not saying there's no benefit in doing it, but you're also going to be limited on the layers. It's harder. There's not as much grippiness for the charcoal to stick to. So I like something that has a little bit more tooth to it just because the charcoal has something to grip to. So the smoother the paper, the less grip, and it's, it's harder to get additional layers. But that is, it's not a right or wrong answer. I would recommend you try both and see what you like best for your techniques. Have I ever worked with oil pastels? Yes, and not in a very long time. I am going to buy some but I'm poor right now. Um, between inflation, the recession, my husband is getting laid off finally. They've kept put, they put that off for the last two and a half years. Well, it's finally happening. So it's a little scary, not good timing. So yeah, I'm not putting money into oil pastels right now. Um, but it is something in my future when hopefully things get sorted. Let's see. Cat's Heart Pick said, getting my values correct was the number one thing I learned from you. Thank you for all you do. Oh, that's awesome. Letty said, do you enjoy doing portraits? If so, what medium? Okay, I got that one. Um, Beth said, I took a colored pencil commit. Nope, I can't see. Beth said, I took a colored pencil commission before Christmas and charged $60. My family members tell me I don't charge enough. What are your thoughts? Honestly? I need to see your work to tell you my thoughts. You've got, there's so many factors when it comes in, comes to selling things. Now, a colored pencil portrait for me, I'm going to put two weeks in, at least a week. 
I'm not going to, $60 for a week's worth of work makes no sense. If you're doing a looser sketch and you're spending 45 minutes, then yeah, $60 might make sense. If you are a newer artist who is just getting started and you're not really, you haven't really refined your style or anything yet or your skill, then maybe $60 is appropriate. It, it, there's not an easy way for me to say for certain. My first rea gut reaction is, oh yeah, you're not charging enough. But I've also seen where people are newer and it's unreasonable to think you're going to, to charge too much while you're still learning. So it, it kind of depends on where you're at skill-wise, whether or not I think that's appropriate or how much time, you know, you did a quick sketch, 45 minutes, then yeah, $60 may be a good price. I don't know without seeing it. Um... Did I put any finishing touches on last week's piece? Yeah, just a couple of little tiny little things I cleaned up. Nothing major. I don't think anything the average person that saw it would notice. But yeah, I did. Um, let's see. What kind of projector would I recommend for tracing a drawing? Oh, so this one's a little bit harder because the one I used, they don't make now. They discontinued it. It was made by Artograph art graph, something like that, but it was like their high end one. And it was like $700, $800. I don't know, way too much money in all honesty. It's great. I love it, but it was, yeah. And it had a lot of problems with the remote. So the remote, you couldn't on the old, this is the one, the old one, the first one it came with, this little piece where the battery goes in, it wouldn't, the battery couldn't sit right. You couldn't get it in and out. It was a real problem. So I don't know if it was a simple recall for me. I contacted them and they sent me a, a replacement, but it was an ongoing problem with that model, which is crazy on something that cost seven, $800. And that was years ago. So that was before inflation hit. So yeah, it was, or the current inflation, it, it was, yeah. And it's still a great Thing, but it turns out it's the exact same model because it was made by LG, I believe. And you could get the LG one for 400 and, or I think it was 550 at the time. And if as long as you knew how to change the program, and I don't I haven't messed with it, so I don't know, but my friend had that one. You just had to make it so it could, could show a still image. Any projector where you can show a still image should work fine. I've not researched it because that's kind of expensive to spend hundreds of dollars to, to see which ones are going to. I probably should though. Maybe when I have money again. It is not the time, but um, any projector where you can get it, and like I said, mine's really just a rebranded LG, but, and you just need to make sure, I think they, they did change the program, so it was super easy to have a still image, so that's the only thing, just make sure it can do a still image, if it can, it should work fine for you, any brand should be fine, uh, it doesn't have to be, there is another art one that I think is 550 right now and mixed reviews on that and I don't know how much of it is user error because it's the same brand and I know mine was good with them but you can probably I would imagine you could get one for $200 from another brand as long as you can get it to do the still image so you might need to be a little bit more technically savvy to make that happen but I know not super helpful and that one you can get from blick.com Dolphin Soul said, when you say you use water-soluble graphite pencils for drawing your design, can you use Inktense pencil instead or are they completely different? You can. It's just that that color might mix in or bleed in an area you didn't want it. So let's say you were using red. Red, you don't want that blending into anything else really. Um, so it just depends on the project you're using and maybe a brown pencil, maybe a gray pencil would work fine. Now, Inktense comes with their ink out, ink is it just called ink outliner? Don't use that. That it, it doesn't, or the point of that one is that it doesn't blend out. I want it to blend out. I don't want to see it. The graphite line blends so much easier. And sometimes with ink tents, when you put a line, even when you blend over it, it keeps reactivating. Like the, it doesn't get blended out all the way. I've also seen a lot of people insisting that their ink tents never really is that permanent. I've not experienced that, but enough people have talked about it that maybe, I don't know if it's a difference in how we're layering the paper. I don't know what the difference is, but it is something to just be aware of. And that would be a little bit concerning to me with you potentially using the ink tents. If I used a color with them, I would use something as neutral as possible, but it, there's times where neutral wouldn't work. It depends on what you're painting or drawing. The graphite just seems to be the easiest and it always erases completely or dissolves completely. Okay.
Jack said, correct me if I'm wrong, but does the grid method take away that handmade human feel to a piece of art? It feels a bit robotic to me. Yeah, and that's kind of my, my thing with it is that it does, it has a more angular look that it, and it's not an issue to me of, oh, they didn't freehand it, so it's not real art. I am not one of those artists. I don't care what method you use to get your can your image onto your paper or your canvas. I just want it to be clean. I don't want to see eraser marks and lines and sketch marks all over the place. Just you need to find a method that gets it clean. And I also don't care what method you use. I don't care if you trace. If that's what gets the best work produced from you, I am okay with that. And if the grid method gets the best results for that artist, I am okay with that. The problem is that the grid method, it seems like most artists have a tendency to follow this kind of angular line and they lose some of the roundness. There was an artist, there's an artist I follow. She's amazing. And I don't even know why she's, I don't think she needs the grid method. I have a feeling this girl's good enough. She could freehand it on her own, but her work, you can tell she used the grid. Like it's very, some of it, I can't tell as much. Some of it, it's really obvious. Just um, it, the fluffier animals she does, the pet, she does a lot of pet portraits. The fluffier ones, it's not so obvious the like a lab it's root the angular shading and stuff it doesn't look I don't I can tell it's a grid I can tell she had used a grid so yeah I'm not a fan myself what do I think about the Lucy drawing tool I have not messed with that what I remember that was that let's see I'm googling it Camera, camera Lucida, Lucida drawing tool. What is that one? Oh, that's, yeah, I've seen that one. I've never played with it. I've never used it, so I don't know. I'm not sure how hard it is to get everything, like, positioned right to make that work well. No idea. I should, I should find out, huh? I should try that. Dalton said, have you ever used both graphite and charcoal together in a drawing? If not, have you ever thought about it? I have. I did. Oh, it's been forever. But I remember doing a portrait. I did a lion that way. I won't do it again. I don't like it. And the reason that I don't like it, and it's the same as like using a carbon pencil. I've used that to get my charcoal, my graphite portions darker. Anywhere where you've used the charcoal or a carbon pencil, it's super matte, super flat. Anywhere where you've used the the graphite, you're going to have a little bit of a sheen to it. Now, obviously, if you push harder, you're going to get more gloss with graphite, but it's just that too shiny, like it, it's too obvious the difference between the two mediums, and I'm just not a fan of the look. Um, they're compatible as far as like it's archival. If you like the results you're getting with doing that, go for it. But I wasn't a fan, and it's not something I'll repeat. i done several years ago. I kept trying. I was determined to make that work, and I just, I never really liked the end results, so... Yeah, no. Still a few minutes left if you wanted to bid on this drawing. Just as a reminder, there you go. Are we good on this? Yeah, and also going back to the safety tips thing, Jack, there are just a lot of weird, creepy people out there, and they are good liars. You may not have any idea you're, I mean, you don't. Anyone being scammed doesn't realize they're being scammed usually. That's how they fall for the scam. The stuff that people, mm, nope, that's just, uh, don't trust anybody. The amount of time, like I know of so many people, there was someone recently I knew who was sending inappropriate messages to a girl and it turned out it was a scammer from India, probably some dude, I doubt. And I'm like, ah, oh, who knows where those photos are going to be. And that's just kind of life lesson. I don't care if you're dating somebody, it's your actual girlfriend. Don't post photos with your face involved, especially of your body parts. Please use some common sense, people, that you just don't know whether someone gets hacked. So even if, if no one planned on that image getting out, you accidentally, oh my gosh, I knew a person who was taking <laughs> She was taking job or ha getting commissions and the person sent her a bunch of files of what she wanted done or a bunch of photos off her phone. Included in those photos were some sexy photos she, she had meant or he had meant, I think it was a dude, sent to his significant other. Sent it to her, her person she was hiring to do artwork. 
that wasn't on purpose. Sometimes people would do that on purpose. So yeah, I just do not, don't, I just don't, don't take those photos. It's not a good idea. It's never a good idea. And if you're going to take those photos, do not let your face be in those photos. So yeah, some of this stuff is just, ooh, people have done. Um, you know, use some common sense. Oh, too many people don't have that though, right? Okay. Susan said, what white paper would you recommend for charcoal if you wanted to use white? I would still use Kansami Tense Comes in White. That's what I would personally use. Um, what is your favorite paper to use graphite drawings minus Strathmore Bristol Vellum? I hate Strathmore Bristol Vellum. Like fiery passion of hate. Things do not stick to it. Who's moving around over there? You want me to play your ad again, don't you? Oh, or maybe you figured out. No, you didn't figure out. I had treats over here. Um, anyway. Bristol vellum, you're it's smooth. You are so limited on how many layers you can get. So for me, my favorite is going to be a hot pressed watercolor paper, Arches uh, or uh, Fabriano Artistico Extra White Hot Press is my other favorite. Now the Fabriano Extra White Hot Press that was one that I used for colored pencil for years. Loved it. So I used it for colored pencil and for graphite. Now I'll only use it for graphite. I don't like it for colored pencil anymore. They changed it. I like the old ones, but they changed it. And so it's too smooth. Now we're getting back to the Bristol vellum where you're limited on how many layers you can get. And so that makes it more difficult to get your color saturation as dark as you previously would be able to. So Bristol vellum, I have a very hard time getting my darks quite as black, quite as dark as what I want with graphite. Whereas I have no problem having that come out as dark as I want on the hot press watercolor paper. It's also, I find it to be more forgiving. I mean, I can erase some, it's just, there's more tooth, there's more to grip. From, I just really like the results better with the hot press watercolor paper myself. Do I use composition rules in my paintings? So that's an interesting thing. So you've got the rule of thirds, we've got the circle-y thing that my brain shut down on, the, oh, somebody correct me. But, um, he, that is one thing. Most things I do not believe that it's a, you're born gifted with art or you're born. I do believe that is, that's a learned technique. It's a learned thing. I do believe that some people have a natural eye for balance and some people struggle with it. And they, the people who struggle with it can still create amazing work. If you follow, you know, follow your rule of thirds or some of those rules, those guidelines can really, really help. I will occasionally use those when I'm trying to figure out where things will, I want to line things up if I'm not certain. But normally, I naturally just do without realizing I'm doing it. I can go through m many of my old paintings and throw the rule of thirds over it and it fits within that. Like it's pretty, pretty close because I do have a natural eye for that balance. So the grit using those rules is really helpful. You can break them. Sometimes it looks better if you don't follow them. So it's not something you have to always do. But for somebody who struggles with getting a good balance, that can be a really good way to ensure that your end piece is more balanced even if you don't have that natural eye for it. Jack said, is that behind you blue or does it just have blue light shining on it? It's actually teal and it's got blue lights. So it's like an aqua color with the blue. The the photo if you saw the vo video I posted over on Instagram earlier, that's probably more accurate to what it looks like in person than yeah. Okay, let's see. Whoop, my phone does not want to wake up. Got another bid for the auction. We are up to $51. And let's see. Oops. Okay, I got those two questions. We've got a few more minutes. Do I still use colored pencils in my artwork? What's my favorite brand? I do still use colored pencil. My favorite brand, um... My two main go really there's three I use regularly Derwent Lightfast, Faber Castell Polychromos, and a little bit less or so, but still I use them a lot as my Karen Josh luminance. So those are my go tos. <coughs> A few more minutes if you've got any questions. How do you bid? Head over to my website. You have to be in the U.S. because it's all I can ship to right now, um, just the size of it. I'll do a smaller one in the future. Or maybe I should do like postcards or something I can send um, overseas. That's easier. The size is just an issue. It gets very expensive to, to ship overseas. But you can, if you're in the U.S., head over to my website, lawcree.com. The links, the direct links in the video description to the, the um, drawing. And yeah, 
just sign up there. If you're going to do it, do it quick because you've got to go through the process of actually signing up. Register. Re what? Register. Register. That's just water, I swear. Register, and then you can bid. Uh, Dolphin said, Dolphin Soul said, what made you start the year with birds as your subject? Um, it's not so much as starting the year with birds. Like, it, I've always painted, I love birds, and you're right. I have all three bird bird yeah all three the first three paintings were all birds yeah that was just coincidence they just found photos that I liked I was just looking for something when I do the live streams it needs to be something I can get done fairly quickly um but when I the other one I had just been planning on with the warbler I just was so drawn to the lighting of that reference photo and I wanted to add mushrooms Yeah, you'll have to, if you go to my website to register, the button to register, go down. There's like this big red register here. Like you can't miss it, but you do have to scroll down. If you don't scroll down, you will miss it. So I guess you can miss it. Have I ever used the wet on wet method in a watercolor paper? Yes. I mean, you kind of have to with watercolor, but yes. Jack said, it's three in the morning here in the UK. It's day, is it daytime there? No, it's 9.50 p.m. here. I had to stay up to catch this live. They're so relaxing to me. Thank you. Oh, that's awesome. Susan said, do you use sketchbooks? And if so, what sketchbooks for charcoal? I have an amazing one. Hold on. I will show you. Let me go grab that. I think this is the one. Wait, is there another one? Okay, it was the right one. I just thought it wasn't because I was looking at it upside down. I knew I drew something in it. So this one is the Stillman and Byrne Nova series. It just, oh, I guess I have to actually switch so you can see. There's the, and it has tons of colors in here. And you can see this drawing that I did. That was in charcoal. So it's a little bit smoother, actually. It's a decent amount smoother, but it still has enough texture that the charcoal stuck with it really well that lessons over on patreon for anyone who wants to follow along but this is one that i really want to fill in with more charcoal so it's not this one's not a big one but it's so nice to work in and i like that you had the option that there's tan black and gray paper in there really really nice i will put a link in i know it's linked over on patreon i'll have to look that one up once i look it up i'll put it in the the description do I know who Kirstie Partridge is? Yes, she's awesome. I love her. Uh, she makes great videos. But yeah, the, in that sketchbook, I've only done one thing. I wanted to do a ton of stuff, but the dolphin is all I've done so far. I have no good excuse. And actually, I like that. I forget I had that. I don't, I'm certain that's on Patreon. I'm, put, I'm showing you on the wrong camera. There we go. I am certain he is on Patreon somewhere. I'm pretty sure that was a lesson over there. Okay. <laughs> dolphin soul said, oh, you know, I want that gorgeous dolphin. You know, what? I should do a dolphin on um, charcoal on one of these live streams. That one, because, and that's the thing that I don't love about sketchbooks. I mean, it's, I can't sell the sketchbook. It's just for me. Whereas if I do it on this, I can sell these. So I, that's why I definitely prefer the Canton Me Tens of Looser papers, just in that it's easier for me to sell, you know, it, it's a low cost way. It's something I can do quick and it's something that I can sell for a lower cost than my bigger projects. If it's in a sketchbook, that's just for me. Like I can't really sell that. Um, let's see. 
The camera angle looks like you're in a paranormal activity. Yeah, I need to change that. The cameras were a bit of a... I bought another Elgato face. So what I'm talking to on this one and what's on my easel. I bought another one of those last week after the live stream and I changed it out for the hound cam and it, I could tell it. you could shake it and it had like something was rattling inside. Something was very loose. So yeah, I have to send it back. And as much as I like Elgato's products, they might have the worst possible customer service. I messaged them last night as soon as I knew it was broken. And it's been 24 hours and I still haven't heard back. Like, and I know they'll get sorted. I know someone who works, uh, well, she works for Corsair, but I, it's just annoying. It's like, okay, it only takes two days to order something from your site, but now that I need this replaced, how long is this going to take? So that definitely annoys me with their really crappy website. It looks, their website looks nice user wise not the Elgato website is terrible. So, um, like for needing to do a return or anything like that, it's not, not good. Um, <laughs> Patrick says, Derwent has a lot of my money now, thanks to your videos. That's awesome. <laughs> yes, the dog treats. The boys need their treats. So let's go ahead. I'm going to, for anyone who hasn't seen it yet, let's go ahead and show you what they made for us, and then I'll give them another treat. Without treats, these puppies are so sad. Your Patreon pledge of only $4 or more gives them cookies of happiness. Act now and the bad cow gets a treat too. Oh, and you also get over 300 art lessons and a new one every single week, plus other rewards. Sign up at patreon.com slash lockery. Yeah, I've watched that video so many times. They're just too cute. Okay, let's see. I don't know if I should make them stay in their beds to have it or call them over. I don't know if you can see them if I call them over here. Let's find out. You boys want a cookie? You want a cookie? I guess that's a yes. Can we see? You have to come over too. Can you see you on the camera? Do you want this cookie? Does that look very tasty? These cookies, like, look, they're like Oreos. They still, they smell so, this is definitely not gluten-free anyway. God, they smell good. Okay. Good boys. And Gibson's going to take his back to his bed because he will not eat his cookies while standing. He goes and crunches them into a million pieces, spits them out, and then licks it all up. So just thanks, Gibson, for the mess. Oh, you're just going to stand here. They're gone. No more. It's all gone. Go lay down. Go lay down. Be a good cow. I know it's very hard for you because you're a very bad cow. Aw. Lay down. Good boy. There we go. And we're all going to stare at Gibson's butt. Okay. Let's see. Um, have I ever used Prismacolor colorless blender with pencil for colored pencil drawings? When you used to use Prismacolors, yeah, and I still have them. And actually, oddly enough, I like their colorless blender better than, I think I've got one from Karen Dosh, none. Eh, it's okay. I, I actually like, that's one product of, of, of Prismacolor that I do like. And that's when I used to, to burnish a lot, but it was definitely causing a lot of pain in my hand from pushing too hard. So it, it doesn't work out great for me, but no, it's a good product. Chickadee's up to $66. I think he's $1 over what last week's charcoal drawing went for. Almost out of time on that. I'm excited to see who wins. Kanejo's here who hates everyone, which is a lie. Because if something goes wrong, he's one of the first people to check on me. If he's like, oh, um, whoa, oh, I went, I accidentally went live a few weeks ago when I was getting everything set up and it was supposed to be private. It wasn't. And a few people saw a few seconds of me just sitting there staring at it going, what is wrong with this? And he was one of the first people to text me going, are you okay? What just happened? So yeah, no, he, he, he talks a lot of crap. He's actually a cool guy. Um, you just never know. Where is Shoulder Chicken? He Shoulder Chicken is in the other room and we definitely on one of these, I think when I do watercolor, I want to bring in, I'll set up a perch for him and we'll have a, I'll throw things on my floor first and we'll have a chicken cam. 
I'll have to lock the boys out of the room for the chicken cam night. The interesting thing with that is going to be that chicken sometimes turns into senior cranky pants, and that might make recording. I may have to have Matt come in and take him out of here. Oh, we are up to $71 on the chickadee. Two minutes left, almost out of time. Oh, I'm excited. And then again, whoever wins, if you want me to put a mat on this, just let me know. It would be not this mat. This mat's all dirty, but I, a new clean black mat. It's just that it's going to cost an extra $15 for me to cover my cost because it costs a lot more to ship when I put the mat on it. Otherwise, this I can can press in between cardboard. I can use a much, I can either do a smaller box or I can press it into cardboard, but I have a lot more options on shipping if I don't mat it. So just the cost, covers my cost to get it matted for you. Does look more complete. You don't, if it's matted, you just pop it right into a frame. It's ready to go. But up to you. you if you're an artist, you probably know how to mat stuff. So up to you guys. And we are almost done. We'll wait and see who wins the chickadee. Looks like two of you are going back and forth right now. Now, luckily, you guys, if you don't win, don't be too disappointed. We're going to be doing auctions all the time. I paid a decent amount of money for that software, so I'm going to be using it. We'll be having a lot of auctions, so you'll get a lot of opportunities. I'm also in February planning a, another sale event, so we'll get some more low-cost options for you guys to buy. And that won't be bidding. I might have an auction going during it, but that'll be like straight out, whoever purchases first sort of thing. So 10 o'clock. So I think, is that it? Are we over? Whoa, we had the third person jump in. Jeez. That came out of nowhere. Let's see. And my phone says it's 10, but I'm not getting the notification that the auction is over. Did it go? Did I not set the timing right? You never know with me. I might have to manually go in and tell it it's over. So the edited clips of these live streams, all this, all the me looking at my phone, all that gets edited out. So you're able to go back and watch if you just want to watch the art lesson or whatever. Everything gets edited out that doesn't belong. Yeah, I don't know if I have this scheduled to end. Let's see. Is it still letting people... I scroll too far. Where's the event? Okay, good. It did end. Just wanted to make sure I had that set right so we could see. I would say who the winner is, but I'm not certain that something didn't, because it came in at 9.59 and I haven't gotten the it ended yet thing, but it looks like we've got a winner at $87. That is awesome. Thank you. Thank you guys, everyone who bid. That's fun. It, it definitely, yeah, I've got winning, okay, winning bid at $87 and that it ended. So that would have been, I won't give a full name, someone Jackson. Um, looks like is the winner of that. Well, I mean, it's showing me as the, that being the last bid. I guess I'd have to open the, the thing up. So anyway, thank you so much. It, it definitely, I'm loving doing these auctions because it really makes me, it puts pressure on me as I'm working. I'm like, as soon as I get the first bit, I'm like, crap, this has to be good. I can't just have to do this. Like, this has to be real. It has to be good. So very, very cool. Very fun. Thank you so much. And, and congratulations to the winner. If the winner wants me to mount this again, email me, lisa at lawcree.com and let me know. Um, and I'll just send you a, a separate, like, bill for you can check out now with your normal the winning bid so that that shows complete and gives me your address but i would just send if you want it matted for 15 if you don't matted don't worry about it you probably know how to do it yourself easy enough to do so that is everything i think we are done thank you guys so much for joining thank you again to my moderators and to my moderators they belong to me that sounds very possessive thank you to our moderators that sounds way better joseph channel is linked in the video description he has new live streams every monday he has live streams all the time um and we also have nick and i believe clark fine art was here tonight as well helping out all of those links are in the video description. Thank you guys so much for joining. We'll be here next week. I have no idea what we are doing next week yet. I need to come up with something tomorrow so I can get that scheduled. And I will see you then.
Bye. Maybe. There. Yeah.